recommendations do you give to your patients then along those lines? So I talk about frequently the three pillars of health and that's nutrition, exercise, and sleep. The sleep one is the one that people feel they can skimp out and think that it's not gonna affect their health. I frequently hear people say that they can function on four or five hours of sleep just like anybody would with eight hours. <clears throat> and one of the leading researchers from UCLA, Matthew Walker, stated really well that if you round to the nearest whole number, the percentage of individuals who can function on four hours of sleep and still be healthy is zero. Mm -hmm. So to think that sleeping four or five hours a week on a, uh, a day or a night on a consistent basis is gonna yield good results, absolutely not. Your creativity, productivity, your cancer risk, your immune system, everything is gonna suffer across the board. So I encourage rest, but then the second part. But just on that, what if you catch up, what if, what if you catch up on the weekends? So say you get four or five hours during the weekend and you sleep <laughs> for like eight or nine hours. On the is weekend. that your secret? <laughs> <laughs> I wish, I have kids, so okay, no. <laughs> got it. Um, catch up works to some degree, but it's not perfect. So napping helps, catching up on weekends helps, but it's really the consistency that's key, getting the same consistent during the same hours of sleep, uh, every night is ideal. Uh, and then the other part of that rest is making sure that your mind is at rest. We talk about acute stress having good impacts on your health. Those types of challenges are good, whether it's to your immune system, your mental state, but then chronic stress is actually toxic to your system. When we're talking about cancer risk, if you're under chronic stress, and you, it can, which can lead to depression, three things happen. A, you're more likely to engage in unhealthy habits like smoking and drinking. Two, you're less likely to seek help and visit a doctor and get all these tremendous screenings and vaccinations that actually prevent cancer. And then three, because of your uh, mood, your sympathetic nervous state is elevated, so not enough healing happens, and that also increases your cancer risk as well. Okay. Um, let's talk about exercise for a minute, too, mm -hmm. as another factor. And it's been interesting. There's been a lot of chatter recently about how, you know, you shouldn't rely on exercise so much for weight loss, per se, but what, how does that affect your chances of developing cancer? Well, exercise helps with a little bit with weight loss, and long term it helps keep weight off, and it really helps prevent weight gain, which is one of the problems. Most people become obese by gaining weight over their lifetime. Um, so, but exercise might have some effects um, on its own, even even beyond weight control. And we've seen in the large studies that uh, exercise reduces risk for several cancers, like breast cancer, colon cancer bladder cancer, stomach, endometrium. So a long list of cancers that are associated with a lot of these lifestyle factors. I think if we put the health benefits that you mentioned from exercise into a pill where we say this pill decreases cancer risk, increases longevity, boosts mood, sexual, cognitive performance, people would pay billions of dollars for this. If I created, I'd win the Nobel Prize, yet it's very difficult to convince my patients to begin an exercise program. 